Hello and welcome back to Hilbert Spaces, the video series where we explain why so-called Hilbert Spaces are so important in different branches of mathematics. Indeed, in today's part 7, we will talk about a special approximation formula which only holds in Hilbert Spaces. So I can already tell you, we actually need both ingredients, so we need the inner product and the completeness. This means for the approximation formula we explained today, Banach spaces are not enough. Okay, but before we go into the details of the geometry of a Hilbert space, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And please don't forget, by using the link in the description you can download additional material for the videos, like books, PDF versions and quizzes. Okay, then I would say, let's continue our discussion about the geometry of a Hilbert space. Indeed, in each Hilbert space we can construct triangles just by combining two vectors x and y. Moreover, we can choose a right angle triangle because we know what a right angle is in a Hilbert space. It simply means that the two vectors x and y are orthogonal. And at this point you know the definition of orthogonality, it simply means that the inner product vanishes. Hence, in every Hilbert space, a right-angled triangle, like on the left-hand side here, makes sense. Just note that the hypotenuse here is given by x plus y. In other words, we just have the vector addition together with the fact that x and y are orthogonal. And now it might not surprise you that even in this abstract sense we have the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, this nice statement about right angled triangles holds in every inner product space. However, what we actually do in this theorem is to measure the lengths of the sides of the triangle. This means we have to use the induced norm on the inner product space, which is simply given as the square root of the inner product where we put in the same vector twice. And now we just have to take two vectors x and y from x which should be orthogonal to each other. And as a reminder, the common notation for this orthogonality is this perpendicular sign. Okay, and now what we want to do is to calculate the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle. Therefore, inside our norm we have to put x plus y. And now since you already know the Pythagorean theorem in the common geometry, you know that we actually talk about the square of the length. And obviously this helps us here as well, because the square of the norm is the inner product by definition. Hence we have x plus y in both components of the inner product, and we also know the inner product is additive in both components. And you already know how this works, we can pull the plus signs out and we get four terms. Here is what we get, and you see in the middle we have two mixed terms. And there comes our orthogonality in, both terms have to vanish by assumption. So only the two inner products xx and yy remain and these can be rewritten with the norm squared again. So we get the length of x squared plus the length of y squared. And that's it, this is the general Pythagorean theorem in inner product spaces and you can visualize it with this right angled triangle. Or just by saying it with abstract words, you connect the vector addition together with the norm under the assumption of orthogonality. So you see, we have a generalized geometry we can use and calculate with, no matter how high dimensional this inner product space actually is. However, it turns out that if we work with an infinite dimension, some things are definitely more complicated. For example, you might recall from linear algebra that often we calculate with so-called orthogonal projections. And now the general approximation formula tells us that we can also do it in an abstract Hilbert space. What this approximation means here is not hard to explain, just imagine that we have a subspace u in x given. This means the origin of the vector space definitely also lies in u, so let's say it's here. And moreover, we also assume that we have a non-zero vector x given. 
This means if we use x as a translation vector, we also get a whole affine subspace similar to u. And the common notation would be x plus u. And now a good question one could ask is what is the distance between both sets in our Hilbert space? And we can immediately estimate that by just choosing two points and calculate the norm of the difference vector. Hence here in the norm we have x minus a point u. So the lowercase u here is a vector in our subspace u. This means by taking any u from the subspace and calculating the norm of x minus u, we get an estimate for the distance. However, now the actual question is, can we find such a u that minimizes this length? And indeed the picture suggests that this minimizer would give an orthogonal vector to u. However, this is not clear at all because the whole thing here is just a visualization of our abstract problem. And please note the problem is not that we can calculate this distance between x plus u and u. The problem is if we can represent it by a single vector u in u. In fact, the distance is easy to define because we can just look at the set of all possible lengths. And then we can just go with our lowercase u through all possible vectors in capital U. So this is just a subset in the real number line and the infimum exists, which defines our distance. And for the rest of the video, let's use this infimum definition for the distance function between x and u. Moreover, obviously this definition does not only work for subspaces, but also for arbitrary subsets in x. Okay, with that, let's formally discuss this approximation formula in a theorem. And there the assumption is, as I've already told you, that we have a complete inner product space. Indeed, having a Hilbert space is essential for having the approximation formula. And in addition, the subsets u we can consider are also specific. More precisely, we need to have a closed set which is also convex. So this convex property is very important, but every subspace satisfies it. Now in the case you have never heard of the term convex, we can quickly define it. It simply means that each connection line between two points in U lies completely in U again. And that's it. This is the definition you should remember for a convex set. The picture is really simple, just imagine two points u and v and then the connection line is just given by all the points in between on a straight line. And all these points have to be elements of the set u as well. And this has to work no matter which two points in u you connect. Hence this one is definitely an example of a convex set. And then maybe we should also give a counterexample. This one here is definitely not convex because we can connect these two points here. And then obviously some part of the line lies outside of U. Okay, so this is an important assumption we need and you will see that in the proof. Indeed, these are all the assumptions we need and now we can talk about the claim of the theorem. It says that for every given vector x, there exists a unique best approximation. So we have existence and uniqueness for this vector in the set u. And this is why I want to call this vector x restricted to u. And please never forget, this is always an element in the set u. And moreover, now we know it's the element that minimizes the distance between x and the set u. Hence the length of x minus this best approximation is exactly this infimum which we call the distance between x and u. Indeed the vector that represents this difference on the left is exactly this straight line in the picture. So this is how you should visualize this best approximation and later we can show that it has something to do with orthogonality. However, first we should prove this existence and uniqueness result. 
This will be a little bit of work, so let's do it in the next video. So I really hope we meet there again and have a nice day. Bye bye.